Well, we've just witnessed in our Acts chapter 5 uh, the divine jailbreak when a, an angel from God came and took the disciples, the apostles, out of prison and ordered them to go back to the temple and start preaching and teaching the gospel once again. So we pick it up at Acts chapter 5, uh, verse 22 through 32, and this is what it says. When the high priests and his associates arrived, and they were a member or a party, the party of the Sadducees, they were, they were almost like political parties and in many ways were very political in their action. Uh, but the leadership was in the hand of the Sadducees. They called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and that would include the party of the uh, uh, the Pharisees, and sent to the jail for the apostles. But on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. So they went back and reported. We found the jail securely locked with the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. On, the hearing, of, on hearing the report, the captain of the temple guard and the chief priests were at a loss wondering what this might lead to. Well, yeah, they were in a, a bit of a, a problem. They found the temple or the guards, the Roman guards at the jail, uh, holding the doors secure, but right without them seeing it, a jailbreak, a divine jailbreak took place. Now, I'm thinking of these uh, of the apostles being in jail, being persecuted. This was real persecution, being put in jail for preaching in the name of Jesus. So uh, I just, as a side thought here, I want to talk to you about uh, history. The history of the church is full of pastors and teachers and evangelists and Christians. Uh, even if you uh, are a quiet Christian in some countries, you'll be persecuted. Uh, we here in North America have no idea what persecution is like, but there are hundreds, there are about 200 million right now Christians who are living in countries where their faith is really put to the test. Now, I don't know anything ab about persecution against other religions. I don't read much about it, but certainly the history is full of persecution against the Christian church. But as I said, we as Christians here in North America really don't know what persecution is. When have you been put in jail? When has a policeman, a policeman told you not to stand on a corner and talk about the Lord Jesus Christ in public? Uh, when's the last time you were beaten or tortured for your faith? Doesn't happen here in North America, at least not yet. But that's real persecution. It's not persecution. When, for instance, back when, when COVID was at its very height, uh, we were all ordered, all ordered to not be in large assemblies. Now, some people looked at it as persecution against Christians. That was not against ex Christians exclusively. It was for everybody. It was a lockdown and it was the law. So here we read in uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 5, what God has to say about it in his word. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers have no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. 
Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of the of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. Now, civil disobedience seems to be a, a very popular thing to do for, uh, in, in various places and countries. I'm not one of those people that'll head out on the streets with a, a placard and, and shout and uh, make accusations of, against the government. I think there are much more powerful ways we can do it, and that would be on our knees. Civil dis disobedience is only, in my opinion, and I believe the Bible would back this up, civil disobedience is only when we are commanded to desist in our faith in Christ and in our obedience to his word. May God help us to understand that God has given government for a purpose, and we need to do, obey, obey the laws of the land, even as regards to our health, as long as they don't trespass on our obedience to God. That's the only time when, diso, when civil disobedience is permissible, when they command us to abandon our faith or to turn our backs on God or put us in jail or torture us because of our faith. That that is persecution. We don't know anything about that yet in North America, but I, I am not sure it's not far in the distance. We should be aware because it could creep, on, creep up on us. And there are some things being done in government that seem to be squeezing the church a little more quickly than we uh, feel is proper. But until it makes us trespass God's law, and God's word, and God's voice in our own hearts to be obedient to his word and to his calling, then we should keep our peace and quietly serve the Lord. Civil disobedience is right only when we are ordered by it to abandon God's word. Do you want to be free, the Bible says, from fear of the authority? Then do what is right and you will be commanded. There is the distinction between persecution and simply obeying the law. And we should obey the law, particularly as Christians. When you're doing the right according to God's word, you can disregard any other law. Now we go to Acts chapter 5, verse 25. Then someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. At that time, the captain went with his officers and brought the apostles. They did so, they, I like this, they did not use force because they feared the people would stone them. You see, the Christian church at that time, among the general public, the, the population of Jerusalem, they had the favor of the people. And they were very much uh, encouraged in what they were doing, and they were admired for what they were doing. And so when they now arrested the apostles again and brought them peacefully, they were afraid they might be stoned by the common people because they were certainly on the side of the church, even though may, they may not yet be part, have been uh, become part of the church. Then in 20, verse 27, the, the apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. And here's the, the statements from the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are de determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Well, they are already guilty of of. Jesus' blood. They were, and they were aware of that. They knew they were guilty, but they were trying to, no, you can't, you know, it's, it's very, very possible to put your own spin on things, and that's what they were trying to do, trying to uh, give a, a kind of a, an accusation against the apostles uh, for what they had done. Uh, putting the blame on them 
you're trying to make us feel guilty. Well, they should have felt guilty because they were. Then Peter, in verse 29, Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than human beings. And there is a, distinct, a distinction between the law of man and the law of God. Who is the higher authority? Of course it is God. Now in verse 30, the Bible says, the God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. Peter didn't pull any punches. He put it right to their faces. You killed him. You hung him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and savior that he might break, bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. And then he goes on in verse 32 to say, and I, I would say this myself too because I join them as a witness. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Obey God. Don't obey man when he tells you to disobey God or the laws of God and what God has put in your heart from his word by, your, by the Spirit. You can't fight God. And these, the Sanhedrin was trying to fight God. And they wanted the leadership. They wanted the, the honor, the, the power, and the, yes, the income that became theirs because of their positions in leading the children of Israel in their, quote, religion. May God help us to really clearly define in our hearts and minds what is God's word, what is God's will, and what is just merely the will of men. May God bless you. We'll pick up with study 17, 18 when we return. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.